move on to our next speaker. Thank you again, Jeff. The next speaker is Mahesh Waje from he's the chief technologist at Lintech, and he will be speaking to us about energy storage activities at Lintech. Mahesh, whenever you're ready. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, so I think I'm the odd man out in this uh, uh, in this group. I'm representing a small business uh, research firm called Lintech. So moving on to the next slide, which uh, basically talks about uh, the title of this talk. Uh, energy storage activities at Lintech. First of all, I would like to thank FLC for providing this opportunity. And uh, the goal for me in this talk is basically to introduce Lintech to the audience and talk about various activities in the energy storage and uh, power generation areas that we are doing here at Lintech. So <clears throat> Lintech is a small business research firm. We are located in College Station, Texas. And our mission is uh, to nurture and harvest scientific create creativity to produce life-changing technologies. We basically use the Small Business Innovation Research, or the SBR mechanism, to fund our R&D activities. And through this mechanism, we uh, develop and commercialize emerging technologies, specifically for government applications, but also for consumer, commercial, and industrial markets. We are about 100 people here, and we are staffed with engineers, physicists, chemists, biologists and uh, machinists under one roof. So that gives us uh, a unique advantage in terms of technology development. And uh, the picture here shows our facility in College Station, Texas. Out of this facility, we are occupying about 75,000 square feet area. We are uh, heavily focused on transitioning our uh, technologies. And a token to that is uh, recent uh, Tibet's award, 2016 Tibet's award for our uh, recent success in technology transition uh, with some projects. And here in this picture, our uh, CEO, Mr. John Clanton, and our uh, senior vice president for business development, uh, Dr. John Stoker, are uh, receiving the award on Lintech's behalf. So uh, the company is structured into four departments, the technology groups, uh, are basically uh, the R&D groups uh, for the company. They are, sub, uh, they are again divided into seven uh, different groups based on the expertise. The focus of the technology groups is on securing the phase one and phase two funding through the SBR mechanisms and any other mechanism possible. And then uh, lead the technology development and transition activities for converting those uh, projects into uh, possible post phase two or uh, commercial endeavors. We have an ABLE engineering group uh, with uh, uh, nearly 25 engineers uh, that support our phase one and phase two projects and generally lead the post phase two system development activities. Uh, we also have a project management team that actively supports all the uh, projects for uh, budget, schedule, contracts, and deliverables uh, tracking. And our business development team is uh, actively engaging with uh, uh, with the customers, both from military as well as uh, industrial uh, area, to identify opportunities, identify product needs for the technology uh, technologies that we are working on, and uh, connect us basically with these customers uh, so that the transition can be effected. This slide shows uh, a typical uh, example of how we execute projects here at Lintech with close collaboration of uh, technology group engineering group and uh, project management. Uh, it's a typical example where we are uh, developing a prototype, uh, particularly for the phase two project uh, uh, for, for any technology. And on this slide, uh, uh, it gives an idea about how we uh, approach uh, this uh, uh, SBR phase one, phase two, and post phase two effort for product development. Typically, uh, any uh, SBR phase one starts with a concept. Uh, in the phase one project, we are trying to demonstrate the feasibility of the concept for the technology. Uh, in the phase two, uh, we then try to develop the a breadboard engineering prototype to demonstrate that concept at a relevant scale. And uh, during both the phase one and phase two, we are actively engaging uh, with our business development team to seek out uh, a uh, real product need for that technology within the military and commercial market. And we try to connect those, uh, to uh, connect the uh, technology base with uh, that customer need. And if there is a successful transition, 
then that transition identifies that uh, uh, specific product need, and then in the post phase two effort, we try to work on that uh, uh, work on the development of that uh, specific need, and uh, the goal is to come up with uh, a package prototype uh, in the post phase two effort. So in the next slide, in this slide, uh, it shows a recent example of technology transition success here at Lintech with a hypoxia training device which we are delivering to uh, Navair. Uh, this device basically uh, uses our electrochemical oxygen generation technology to generate depleted oxygen uh, containing air. And uh, the purpose of this device is to train pilots for hypoxia condition uh, to basically simulate depleted oxygen environments uh, as it relates to uh, different altitudes. So this is uh, for a mobile ground-based facility for training pilots to uh, experience this hypoxia condition. And on this slide, uh, it shows uh, how we have progressed uh, from a phase one short sales uh, stack demonstration to a integrated uh, breadboard uh, prototype de uh, demonstration in the phase two to a complete packaged uh, product in the post phase two effort. This on-demand hypoxia trainer is scheduled to be uh, scheduled to resume manufacturing in uh, 2019, and by the 2019 end, we are expected to uh, deliver several units to Navy. So, after this brief introduction, I'll come back to the original topic, which is the energy storage focus uh, for this uh, uh, for this webinar. Again, uh, the energy storage piece is a very important piece in this chain from uh, the energy sources to the applications. And uh, Lintech specifically has been focusing on custom solutions uh, for niche applications for the energy and power systems, specifically for military and space applications or space pla platforms. There are three specific technology areas that we have worked here at Lintech over the past 20 plus years of our existence. Uh, the first is the regenerative fuel cell systems and components, which basically use the uh, fuel cell and electrolyzers uh, systems that have been a core technology for Lintec for uh, all, all of its existence. We are also heavily working in the, uh, in the battery research, uh, and uh, recently we have uh, several battery programs ongoing. Uh, we have lithium-ion batteries, different chemistries of uh, different lithium chemistries, as well as different non-lithium chemistries. Uh, ongoing at this moment. And also, uh, we are uh, working on materials as well as system level research in this area. We are also involved in ultracapacitor research uh, with a few projects. So in the next few slides, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, specific examples uh, in these different areas, uh, specifically, uh, some recent uh, projects that we are uh, having here at Lintech. This slide shows uh, our proton exchange membrane fuel cell elect and electrolyzer stacks that we have developed over the years. Uh, we have developed stacks from anywhere from handheld uh, 5 watt flat stack uh, design to uh, 40 kilowatt hydrogen oxygen uh, fuel cell stacks. And uh, these stacks we have uh, used uh, in uh, various systems, an example is shown on this uh, slide, which shows uh, uh, the stacks from anywhere from 5 watt to 30 kilowatt uh, that we have developed and demonstrated in these systems. A recent post to, ex uh, post to uh, example, post phase two example of uh, the fuel cell power system development is shown on this slide, where we are trying to develop a fuel cell power system for UUV application for uh, the Navy. And again, the appeal is longer uh, run time and uh, quite operation with the fuel cells, and also the improved safety and reliability of the fuel cell system. In this uh, system, we are not only developing the, uh, we have not only developed the fuel cell stack, but uh, a custom designed fuel cell stack, but also the hydrogen generation as well as oxygen gener generation system and also the balance, balance of plant and electronics and uh, packaged it into the UUV hull. 
a demonstration of this system has already uh, been done at in the lab environment and uh, right now we are in the uh, we are awaiting further uh, funding in this area to uh, demonstrate this in the actual uh, uh, actual uuv environment we are also actively uh, engaged in solid oxide fuel cell research uh, our recent effort has been focused on dry methane fed solid oxide fuel cell stack demonstration. The appeal for uh, direct me uh, methane fed solid oxide fuel cells is basically eliminating the reformation step, uh, which will eliminate the water required for this, uh, uh, for, for this system. And uh, this is particularly appealing for the space application where uh, system mass is a major concern. The challenges, again, for direct methane-fed uh, solid oxide fuel cell is the poor oxidation kinetics for methane, as well as the coking problem uh, due to uh, the methane electro-oxidation. And we are approaching this with uh, advanced anode catalyst materials, which are comprised of uh, layered mixed ionic electronic conductors. Currently, uh, we have uh, proven feasibility of our materials uh, with uh, small uh, short stack demonstrations. Uh, the figures for uh, polarization curves are shown on the, slide, uh, on the slide here. And right now we are working on developing a planar stack design for demonstrating this technology. As I said, uh, Lintec is also uh, actively working on different aspects of battery research. Uh, we have several programs ongoing uh, currently uh, for battery and ultracapacitor research. There are three specific areas uh, I can uh, dot down in this case. The first is the high energy and uh, high power density requirement. So in this case, we have uh, projects uh, for advancing lithium ion battery chemistries with high capacity anode and cathode materials. We also have projects for lithium sulfur and lithium air chemistries. Another aspect of the battery research is the improved safety and reliability in this case, uh, we have projects. Uh, we uh, we have active projects uh, in solid state batteries, and we have several projects that we worked on for developing non-flammable electrolyte compositions. And uh, recently, also we have uh, ongoing projects uh, in development of low-cost and safer non-lithium chemistries. So I'll be giving some uh, specific examples of uh, our battery uh, projects, ongoing battery projects specifically the uh, projects that are in the phase two level uh, of development in the next few slides. On this slide, it shows our advanced lithium ion battery work, which is uh, uh, funded through Air Force uh, SBR program. And uh, in this program, we are developing both high capacity cathode as well as anode materials and electrodes uh, for uh, lithium ion batteries, which can reach 300 watt hours per kg energy density at the cell level. We have demonstrated uh, through our uh, preliminary studies uh, that we can reach this uh, energy density at the cell level. And also we have demonstrated cycling stability of our materials uh, up to 1,000 cycles at 3C rate. Currently we are uh, in the process of development of a 3 amp hour prototype power cell for uh, this technology. We are also actively working on lithium sulfur battery. Uh, there are several projects ongoing at this moment in this area. And our, uh, again, the goal is to address the poor cycling stability problem with the lithium, lithium sulfur batteries, uh, basically to address the polysulfide shuttling problem. Our approach is, again, materials-based, and uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are working on different electrode architectures as well. Uh, to effect high sulfur loadings in the cathode electrodes uh, that will basically give high energy density for the packaged battery. Currently, we have proven feasibility of our uh, lithium sulfur battery materials with uh, stable cycling performance as illustrated on this slide. In fact, uh, some of our recent data has shown uh, up to 1,000 cycle stability with uh, uh, insignificant performance degradation. We are also working on power cell demonstration for the lithium sulfur battery uh, with our materials. Another area that we are actively working on is lithium air battery. Uh, again, uh, lithium air battery chemistry is uh, 
provides the highest energy density option among all the lithium chemistries. But uh, the cathode is again the problem where uh, the rechargeability of uh, lithium peroxide cathode, uh, lithium peroxide formation and uh, uh, degradation reactions at cathode are a, a specific problem in this case. So we are addressing the poor cathode kinetics and the cycling stability and the rechargeability of this uh, chemistry with uh, materials uh, innovations uh, for cathodes, electrolytes, as well as lithium anode, and also working on the architecture, uh, electrode architecture to address these issues. Currently, again, we have proven feasibility for rechargeability of this high energy density lithium air battery with our phase one work, and this project is currently in, in phase two. We are working on improvement in cycling stability and also power cell demonstration in this case. Uh, the last slide I have here is for solid-state batteries. Uh, we have several projects going on in this area as well. These uh, uh, solid-state electrolytes, as uh, the previous speaker also mentioned, uh, it's, it's uh, very attractive from improved safety as well as abuse tolerance. It can also provide high energy density if you are able to use uh, thin uh, solid electrolytes. However, the work so far has uh, mostly focused on thin uh, electrodes for this technology. That's because of the challenges that are associated with this uh, solid state electrolytes. Uh, basically, the poor electrode architecture um, in these uh, solid state electrodes leads to low utilization of the active material and high resistance and hence poor overall performance, especially for the thicker electrodes. So the focus at Lintec is on uh, thicker uh, electrode demonstration so that uh, we can improve the overall energy density of uh, uh, with this solid state battery concept. We are again working on several aspects, material aspects of this uh, uh, of these batteries uh, from anode to cathode and to uh, solid electrolyte. And currently this uh, work is in early stage feasibility research. So that pretty much pretty much ends my presentation. Uh, there are several other aspects that I haven't uh, mentioned in this presentation. Uh, as I said before, uh, we are working on non-flammable non electrolyte ultra capacitors. We are also working on uh, thermal management systems for batteries and uh, non-lithium chemistries. But uh, I hope I'm able to uh, convey the capabilities of Lintec and uh, the overall uh, work that we are doing in this area uh, to the audience. So with that, I again thank uh, FLC for giving this opportunity and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you, Mahesh. We'll wait a moment here to see if any questions are submitted and then we'll move on to our next speaker.